Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel. Kaushal this side and I hope you guys are doing well. Today, we'll be taking you through CSS math functions. In this video tutorial, you guys will understand what CSS math function is and how we can use maths with CSS. Because as we all know, CSS is basically used to style a web page, right? So what is the use of maths with CSS? So you guys will understand it in this particular video. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have regular updates on multiple programming videos. So if you are a programmer and if you want to learn something new, then consider getting subscribed to our channel and press that bell icon to never miss any updates from Simply Code. So without any further delay, let's get started. Before we move on to the programming part, let's understand what CSS math functions are. So CSS math functions are a way for web designers to use math like addition and subtraction to make changes to the design of a website. For example, uh, if you are a designer, you can use math to make a part of the website bigger or smaller than the other part. It's like when you want to build something and you want some parts to be bigger or smaller. CSS math functions help the designer to adjust size of various parts of a website. So it's basically a way for designer to make a website look more attractive to the user or just how they want it to look. So yeah, this is what math functions is. This is the basic definition of CSS math functions. Although this topic is all, always under debate, like why we use maths with CSS. This is the reason of for using maths with CSS. So without wasting any more time, let's move on to the programming part and you guys will understand CSS math functions more easily. Fine. So there are three different types of math functions we are going to discuss in this particular video, which are the calc math function, or which is, we can say calculate math function, max and min. So these are the three functions we are going to discuss in this particular video. So let's move on to the calculate function first. So what the calculate function does is it performs a calculation to be used as a property value. So basically we use maths in our property values. Fine. So let's understand it with the help of an example. So here you can see we have the HTML part. Now what we are going to do is we are going to write a paragraph over here. Fine. So let's give it some ID. Okay, so we'll write here div as let's say we are the we have the ID as para. Now we'll write over here something. We can write anything. Like let's say I'm writing over here subscribe to our channel. Fine. Save it. And here you can see we have subscribed to our channel written on the web page. This is the output. Let's move on to the styling part or we can say the CSS part directly. So here we are using the style tag in the head section of HTML document. So here what we are going to do is we are going to style. Fine. So we have a ID as para. We'll access this with the help of a hash symbol. Now we have the ID accessed. Now we'll write over here. Let's say some properties. Let's say we are going to position this as absolute. Then we'll write over here, let's say left. Fine. Left we are going to keep as 50 pixels. Save it. And here you can see nothing happens as of now. Now the next thing we are going to do is we are going to write here width. Width we are going to keep as here we are going to use the math. So what we'll do is we'll use the calc function. This is a predefined function we use in CSS. So this calculate or calc function we are going to use to calculate the width. Fine. Usually what happens is we always have the width as 100%. So if we write 100%, it means that the whole width of the web page. Fine. So what we are going to do is we are going to write here calc 100%. So we are going to keep the width as 100% minus. So this is maths 100 pixels let's say we are writing over this writing here this save it and here you can see nothing happens as of now now the next thing we are going to do is we are going to give border to this so we'll write here border as one pixel solid and let's say black in color fine save it and here you can see it's not working let me just check it once the paragraph tag is complete the Okay, so we have to write here ID as para, not div as para. So that was the mistake. Save it now. And here you can see every property is working. It's 50 pixels away from the left side. The width is 100% minus 100 pixels. So what we'll do is we'll remove this left from here. Save it now. And here you can see the width is 100 pixels less than the total width. Fine. So here you can see as well. So what we can do is we can write here 500 pixels as well. So here you can see 
this is 500 pixels so this particular side is 500 pixels and the total width of this particular div tag or we can say this particular paragraph is 500 pixel less than the actual width fine the actual width of a web page so this is how we can use the calc method so let's write over here 100 as of now because 100 looks much better than 500 and we can all also use the left property here left as 50 pixels save it and here you can see the left side in the left side we have 50 pixels left now now what we are going to do is we are going to write it here background color let's give it some background color save it aquamarine is our color we, you can choose any color so this is basically we are showing you what css math functions can do now we'll write over here padding okay not pad padding we have to write padding let's say we are writing five pixels so here you can see it looks fine now so here you guys must have understood the concept of using maths in css right the calculate function function we have used so for now this calculate function will calculate the width we want to give this to this particular tag or we can say html element of ours fine so here we have used 100 percent minus 100 pixels so it's totally fine right so we have two other functions right we have the max function and the min function so the max and min functions we have already used in our css but let's take a look at them again so the max function what we can do is we can set the width as well again so let's say we are what we are doing is we are going to comment this line for now and we are going to use the width property again but this time we are not going to use the what the calculate method we are going to use the max method fine so let's say we are writing over here width and we are using the okay max value so we are going to write here max as 50 percent and 300 pixels fine save it and here you can see the difference fine it can either be 50 percent or 300 pixels so for now let's remove the left from here or we will comment this left property as well save it and here you can see it's 50 percent of the total web page and 300 pixels fine so similarly we can use the min function function as well so there's another function which is the min function if we write here min let me just add the height as well first so i'll write here height as 100 pixels save it and here you can see the height of this particular uh, what we can say box or division or container is changed to 100 pixels so width is 50 percent or 300 pixels max so this is and similarly we can use the min property as well just write here remove this width save it here you can see you can see it right so what we are going to do is we are going to write it like this the border we have here now we are going to use the min property so min property again we are going to use the same values which is 50 percent and 300 pixels save it and here you can see 300 pixels is smaller so here you can see the actual size is 300 pixels of this box so which is working totally fine these are the math functions we can use with css on our website again i've already told you what css math functions are and why we use them so the basic point of using math function functions is css math functions allows us to use math like addition and subtraction in our website's design fine if we are making uh, for example if we want to make one part of our website bigger than the other part that's where we can use the math function so we have already been through css layouts in the previous videos that also where we can use math functions to lay off different html elements on a web page with the help of css that's the basic of css math functions so that's all for this video guys i hope you guys must have understood the concept of using math functions in css or we can say how css uses maths to design a website or to style a web page so if you still have any doubts regarding this topic then please feel free to drop them down in the comment section below we'll definitely answer them for you so thank you so much for being here guys stay tuned and keep supporting simply code thank you